Aircraft carriers. They are huge, they are deadly, and they are the most important weapon in the arsenal of any naval force in the world. The US Navy by far has the deadliest aircraft carriers. But with other nations such as China and Russia catching up, it looks like there is going to be shift in the direction that the US Navy takes in the future. In this episode, we are going to learn all about the latest generation of US designed aircraft carriers and how they'll fare in modern naval combat. So let's get to it. Is bigger better? When you think of an aircraft carrier, you imagine a behemoth of a ship. The size of a typical aircraft carrier is almost 1,000 feet in length. The size of aircraft carriers is justified since they have the ability to house more than 70 aircrafts. Aircraft carriers are crucial for the military might since they allow countries to strategically place them anywhere in the ocean and both act as a deterrent against enemy aggression and give you the ability to mount a swift response. The US currently has 11 aircraft carriers that are serving in active duty around the world. 10 of these are the Nimitz class flat tops and one is the newly introduced Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier. The Gerald R. Ford class is the largest aircraft carrier in the world. But the question that matters is that is this aircraft carrier the most effective as well? There has been an argument for lighter and smaller aircraft carriers recently. Secretary of the US Navy, Kenneth Braithwaite, has asked the Navy to employ at least six smaller aircraft carriers. Why, you might ask? It is because lighter and smaller aircraft carriers might be more effective in the modern arena of warfare. The bigger an aircraft carrier is, the harder it is to place it in certain locations, not to mention the cost aspect. It can be incredibly expensive to manufacture large aircraft carriers. We can take the example of the Gerald R. Ford class in this case. It took an incredible $13 billion to build it. While it may be the most advanced and biggest aircraft carrier in the world, is it worth the price tag if it can't be placed in the right strategic locations due to its size? There is no simple answer to that question. One thing that can be said, however, is that smaller and lighter aircraft carriers might be a good idea for the future. The use of unmanned aerial vehicles and drones is becoming more and more popular. So, would it be such a bad idea to have a fleet of similar aircraft carriers that could be placed in the most important strategic locations armed with UAVs and drones? Why go small? The idea of this concept is to take the fight to enemy and fight the threat wherever it is. If the US Navy wants to fight the Russian submarines and Chinese naval forces including their aircraft carriers, then it is crucial to have smaller and lighter aircraft carriers that are equipped with UAVs and drones. They will be better suited to travel to high-risk areas and will be able to engage more effectively with enemy forces. And then there is the aspect of saving major costs. For example, the $13 billion it took to make one Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier and the same amount three smaller and lighter aircraft carriers could have been added into the naval fleet. While it is true that because of its size, the Gerald R. Ford is able to generate more air sorties per day than any other aircraft carrier, but it is also true that it would be very ineffective in taking the fight to the enemy. A fleet of smaller and lighter aircraft carriers will save a lot of money which can be invested in other projects, and it seems like in the future they will also be the most effective. It seems like bigger might not mean better all the time. Sometimes smaller is better. There has been a recent realization among the top military experts and officials in the US, and we can see a great push towards the production of smaller and lighter aircraft carriers. This does not mean that the larger aircraft carriers will become obsolete each will just play a different role. The smaller and lighter aircraft carriers will be used in situations where it is necessary to fight the threat more up close, and the larger aircraft carriers will serve as base of operations for these missions. These two classes of aircraft carriers working together can pose a deadly threat that might be impossible for enemy forces to deal with. Even if the larger aircraft carriers are eliminated altogether for the Navy and replaced by a fleet of smaller aircraft carriers, the dominance of the US Navy over the seas would not take a hit. It would not only be cheaper to produce smaller and lighter aircraft carriers, but they can perform as well as the big ones too. The key here is quantity. A big aircraft carrier will be able to house more planes and generate more air sorties than a smaller one 
but when you have a larger number of small aircraft carriers, they will be able to meet the statistics of big aircraft carriers that are fewer in number and maybe even surpass them in terms of performance and effectiveness. How will small be more effective? When there is no scenario of war, these smaller aircraft carriers will be able to serve as patrol units in high conflict zones. This is something that the larger aircraft carriers are just unable to do effectively. And if a situation of conflict arises, the smaller aircraft carriers can be teamed up with the larger ones to form a deadly strike force. Going smaller makes sense for the future. Some other countries like China are already rumored to be developing smaller aircraft carriers. The Type 076 class warship is the Chinese version of a smaller aircraft carrier. According to several sources, the Chinese Navy plans on using UAVs and drones for these smaller aircraft carriers. This will give a major boost to the naval power of China, making it more of a threat to the US. So it would seem like Secretary of the Navy Kenneth Braithwaite is not all wrong for asking for a fleet of smaller aircraft carriers instead of more big ones. It is also not something that is completely foreign. In World War II, the US employed smaller aircraft carriers that were designed with the purpose of providing air cover to convoys. These small aircraft carriers remained in service till the late 40s. So there is some proof of concept there. But that being said, we will have to wait and see if the idea of smaller aircraft carriers takes flight or not. There are a lot of people who don't like the idea and prefer the inclusion of more big aircraft carriers to the naval fleet. The biggest and the baddest. For more than 40 years, Nimitz-class carriers have displayed the first responder role in crises and conflicts. The delivery of CVN-77 in 2009 provided continued proof of the viability of the early 60s design of the Nimitz-class carriers. These ships have served the nation well, and will continue to do so in the coming decades. Ford-class ships will begin to succeed those of the Nimitz-class when Gerald R. Ford CVN-78 is commissioned. While the aircraft carrier's basic mission will remain unchanged, Ford-class ships will deliver greater lethality, survivability, and joint interoperability, along with unmatched versatility and compatibility with continuing joint force transformation, all at a reduced operating and maintenance cost to taxpayers. Ford will be capable of carrying the Navy's most advanced aircraft, such as the F-35C Lightning II, F-A-18EF Super Hornet, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye, E-A-18G Growler Electronic Attack Aircraft, MH-60RS Helicopters, and Unmanned Air Vehicles. Adding to its versatility, Ford will also be able to recover and launch various short takeoff and vertical landing Stovall aircraft flown by the United States Marine Corps. Finally, the design margins built into the ship will allow for integration of future manned and unmanned aircraft with minimal ship alterations. What's new in the Gerald R. Ford CVN-78? The Ford class incorporates advancements in technology that make the carrier more capable and more efficient while also providing it with the ability to implement future advancements in technology with relative ease, with increased capability and reduced total ownership costs through, e.g., manpower reductions and innovations, such as greater electrical production from the nuclear power plant, the use of fiber optic networks, improved corrosion control, and the use of new, lightweight materials, CVN-78 and future Ford-class carriers package increased warfighting capability and enhanced survivability in a platform that will keep pace with the threat through the course of the 21st century. The island on CVN-78 is smaller and further aft than that of previous carriers, increasing space for flight deck operations and aircraft maintenance, thus enabling the ship and air wing to launch more aircraft sorties per day. CVN-78 has replaced legacy steam-powered systems with electric drive components. With three times the electrical generation capacity of any previous carrier, the ship is readily susceptible of future modernization with new and emerging technologies throughout its 50-year service life. A longer time between maintenance availabilities allows for increased steaming days over the life of the ship. Its improved survivability includes improvements in hull design, firefighting systems, and weapon stowage. Improved weapons and material handling are provided by the advanced weapons elevators, which provide faster movement of ordnance from magazines to aircraft. 
Ford class aircraft carriers include new and innovative technologies to launch and recover aircraft. The Ford class electromagnetic powered aircraft launch system offers numerous advantages over the traditional steam powered catapults of the Nimitz class carriers. EMAILS provides for more accurate end speed control with a smoother acceleration at both high and low speeds. The system also possesses the necessary energy capacity to support an increased launch envelope and a capability of launching both current and future carrier air wing platforms, from the lightest unmanned aerial vehicles to heavy strike fighters. The advanced arresting gear system provides forward class ships with the ability to recover both current and projected carrier-based tail hook equipped aircraft, and is the follow-on system to the Mark 7 system of the Nimitz class. AAG allows for the recovery of a broader range of aircraft and, through its greater control, reduces the fatigue impact load on the recovered platforms. The AAG architecture includes built-in test and diagnostic technologies. Ford class carriers include quality of life enhancements, such as improved berthing compartments, better gyms, and more ergonomic workspaces. Light carriers and heavy carriers. We have presented you with all the facts. The lighter aircraft carriers have a place in the modern arena of war and can provide a significant advantage to any naval force in the world. With China already making progress in the regard, odds are that the US will also follow suit. But then again, nothing can be said for certain. Maybe the officials and experts who oppose the idea have a better case for the heavy carriers. As we have described above, the Gerald R. Ford class is exceptional despite its cost and size. It is by far the most advanced and deadly aircraft carrier in the world. The best case scenario will be for the lighter and heavier aircraft carriers to work in tandem, each performing the role it can perform best. We will have to wait and see what the future holds, and going by what the Gerald R. Ford class has demonstrated, it will be amazing. And that's all the time we have for today's video. We hope you enjoyed taking a look at the latest in US aircraft carriers. Please give this video a like if you learned something new, and make sure you subscribe so you never miss another amazing video from Insane Reality. See you next time!